Welcome guys, thanks for coming back for another episode. We're up to episode 12 now, and this is gonna be about plumbing part two, and it's also gonna incorporate some gas in it as well. So pretty soon I'll be traveling around Australia in the van, and I'll be putting up lots of vlogs and travel vlogs and stuff like that. So go follow me on social media, and you can follow all that on this page on YouTube or Facebook and Instagram. So I've been getting a lot of questions about the weight of the van and am I over or adding all this cabinetry, how heavy is it gonna be? Um, and I didn't really disclose the weight in episode 11, so I actually forgot. But I did weigh the van at the end of episode 10, so after I'd done the sheeting, and it weighed 3.16 tons. Now, first off, I'll just explain about the van a little bit. This van can take a max capacity of four and a half tons. So that's including the maximum payload and the weight of the van as well, can be a maximum of four and a half tons. But the front and the back axles have their individual max loading. So the front axle can take a max weight of 1.85 tons and the back can take 3.2 tons. Another thing I should mention is that the rear wheels on the van are dual wheels so that each side has two wheels, sort of like a truck. So that's what allows this van to take a bit more extra weight than just a single wheel on the back. So that's probably why a lot of people have thought that this is gonna be overweight. So yeah, at the end of episode 10, it weighed 3.16 tons in total. And I did a split weight as well. So the front, weighed 1.57 tons on the front axle, and the back was 1.59 tons at the end of episode 10. I weighed it just before I finished episode 11, so after adding all the cabinetry, the only thing that I hadn't added at the time was the uh, kitchen bench and this kitchen cabinetry here. So without that, it weighed 3.34 tons in total, and the front axle, had 1.59 tons on it and the back axle had 1.75 tons so that's a difference of 180 kilograms in total the front axle the difference was 20 kilograms from episode 10 to 11 and the back axle added 160 kilos so if we if we included this um, bit of cabinetry in the bench top here it probably would have been a total difference of maybe 200 kilograms which is less than I thought it would be for all the cabinetry, but that's what the scale said. So I also did another calculation and worked out how much each axle has left to carry. So on the front, I've got 260 kilograms that I can add to it from now. And on the back axle, I can add 1.45 tons um, more weight. But pretty much as the van is right now, I pretty much won't be adding basically any more weight. Everything's been built now, everything's in. The only thing that would add weight is just things in the drawers, the cupboards and everything, which is pretty much already full anyway, so. And one one other thing I'll mention is that when I weighed the van both the times at the end of episode 10 and 11, I had a full tank of 110 liters of fresh water sitting in there as well. So that accounts to all that weight of the water as well. So in other words, what I'm trying to say is that this van is nowhere near the max capacity of what it can take. So I'm not worried about that. Um, and you might be asking, what about fuel economy? I have noticed that driving around like cities and all that, it might use a tiny bit extra fuel, but on highways, it basically, you can't even notice it. So I just thought I'd clear that up so that everyone's clear about that. This van is not nowhere near overweight. So I'll just mention about the gas. I didn't run any of the gas lines or hook up any of the gas in this van. I actually got a certified gas man to come out and run all the lines and install everything uh, properly. So he did all the gas and I'll show you everything that he did and how he did it. And that's it for the intro, so let's get into it. Firstly, I measured up where I could put the shower head. measured up for a timber noggin and then screwed the copper pipe base to the nog. Mm -hmm. 
Once this was mounted, I measured the excess copper pipe and chopped it off. I then sealed up the gaps next to the copper pipe. I used plumber's tape to ensure a good seal uh, and then I screwed the rows on. This is exhaust heat wrap and the manufacturer recommends just wetting it with a hose before you put it on the exhaust. So I started it off and then secured it with the stainless steel zip tie and then I wrapped it over each other, about half overlapping each other around every bend of the pipe. So this is another custom tank made by Atlas Tanks for the grey water and what I'm doing now is just putting it into place and marking where I can put a hole for the tank gauge probe. I then measured out the metal tank strap to secure the tank to the chassis. I secured the strap to the chassis with thick uh, roof tapping screws. This was the grill put in by the gas guy to allow uh, gas to leak out of the van if there ever was a gas leak. And I had to put in another one-way check valve, which I'll explain what's for at the end of the video. Next, I ran the hot and cold water to the sink to underneath so I can connect it up. And this is a little piece that tees off for the filtration system. This is the reverse osmosis and alkalizer filtration system. So first I screwed on the little piece on the top of the tank and then I marked out where to cut the hole for the faucet and drilled that hole. And next I ran my 25mm drainage piping and connected it to the bottom of the sink. And then this then runs down to a small little trap which continues down to 
another piece which connects to the drain section for the filtration system. And to secure the tank, I just used a little adjustable strap and then I tightened it up and the tank is really secure, not going anywhere. And then after that, I just connected all the pipes for the filtration system and then the last one was going up to the faucet. Finally, I got underneath the van and finished connecting and teeing in all the drainage from the shower in the sink into the grey water tank. After that, I glued up some piping which connects to the outlet of the grey water tank and this goes to an on-off valve to release all the water from the tank. All right, thanks guys for watching this episode. I'm just gonna run you through everything uh, of the gas and the plumbing and how it works. And yeah, so let's get into it. So first, I'll run everyone through the sink. So just a Dometic one, it flips up like that. And you got the cold there. Pretty good water flow if you got it on full. And you got your hot there. Now that just drains down to there. I've got a little catch here for like food and stuff so you can empty that out, it doesn't go down into the trap. Now that'll drain down. You can just turn that, put that down like that. So that just is connected to that hose pipe there, drains down to there, into this little trap here. So that's a trap to stop uh, smells coming back up. Goes through that drain there, which is connected to the filtration system, which I'll run through in a second. And that just goes straight through the floor into the gray water tank. So I'll get under there in a minute, but first I'll run you through the little tap here. So this is a reverse osmosis alkalizer uh, filter tap. So that's providing you really, really clean water there. And that is fed through a small line there. So what's happening is your water here line goes up to your cold for your tap up the top, but you tee off from here and it goes into the filtration system here. So it's got stage one, stage two, and stage three. Um, stage one is just all your like dirt and large particles. Stage two says chlorine, taste, color, and odor. And stage three is just pi finer particles again. So what happens is it goes through stage one and two filters, and then it goes through your reverse osmosis, which is filtering like fluoride and all the things like that. Um, I believe then it goes into your alkalizer, which adds the minerals and everything back into the water. And then finally it goes through the stage three filter and it stores in this tank. And the point of the tank is so that you can have like a bit of supply because it takes about an hour to fill that, I think, or maybe a bit more. So you can have some on demand. And it just has a little drain here, a little waste pipe that taps into the main drain because there's a uh, waste water that doesn't fit through the reverse osmosis uh, filter. So that just gets filtered into here. I also found that because this is in the same cabinet as the compressor here, this compressor gets pretty warm. And even though it's got a fan, the fan of the compressor blows back in, doesn't blow out. So I put in a second little computer fan that runs 24 seven and that's sucking all the air out so that all the water out the top of the faucet is nice room cool temperature not uh, not warm so i've got really clean water wherever i go i just fill my uh, stainless steel two liter water jug up with that and yeah i can drink as much clean water as i want so that covers me for the sink and the drinking faucet now let's have a look at the gas stove so this is dometic again and it's a three burner so it's got your three knobs and your ignition switch turn your knob like a normal one That'll start it. And I found that this is, uh, gives off a lot of heat. So it doesn't have any problem boiling jugs and everything like that. 
So these two burners are bigger than this one. So these are like your main cookers and then this one's like a bit of a smaller one. Um, so I haven't had any problem with cooking. It cooks really well, gives off a fair amount of heat and it's great because it's right next to the door. So if I want to, if I want to be closed up, this window actually does slide or I can just open the whole door and better yet, I got my Max Air exhaust van just there. So I just switch that to exhaust and that'll suck all the fumes out straight from the cooking area and all the heat as well. So it works perfectly. Another good feature is it's got like a splash back here. So you don't get food on your window or anything. It'll come here, it's really easy to wipe off. Now they're really easy to clean as well because these uh, black parts come straight out and you can just wipe your rag in a motion like that and go around like that. It's really, really easy. So I love that cooker. So Dometic did a good job with that. And another thing that I love about the sink and the cooktop is that you can put this down and it basically becomes bench space. So basically I've got all that as a bench when I'm not using the sink or the cooker. So it just expands your room so much more, especially for in a van because you don't have much room. And this is a little uh, custom chopping board that I made as an offcut from this bench. And I just cut it out put a handle in it and I put about three coats of the timber oil on it. So yeah, it worked out really good and it's a pretty sturdy chopping board. So next I will show you the tank gauge and the hot water system display. So in the pantry, just here, we can go in the pantry and here's my little dials here. So the bottom one here is your temperature of what you've set your hot water temperature to. So 43 is a pretty good temperature and this is the tank gauge so on the left we've got the gray water tank and on the right we've got the fresh water so fresh water is full and the gray water is empty right now so you want to keep gray water pretty empty otherwise it will start overflowing and i just check that regularly uh, the gauge sometimes does not display like really accurately because you might be parked on a big angle on a hill and it will say you're full, but really like you're half full. So you just got to be wary of that. So I thought I'd keep that nice and tucked away. And next I've got the shower door. So I got this shower door made by a company called Retricom. And they specialize in like cold room panels and uh, doors and all that stuff. So I actually knew them through work. And this door is pretty waterproof. I'll show you how it works. So it's actually got an engaged the lock thing and you got to put a bit of pressure on the door just turn it and it will come open so that's made out of uh, aluminium and I've sealed everything up on the door so that no water can come in and when that closes there's this uh, waterproof strip here all around the edges and that puts a pressure on the door on the uh, angle there and it will seal and on the bottom it's just got this little uh hump here which is all sealed and then on the bottom of the door it's got sort of like a rubber profile which puts a lot of pressure on that little uh hump there and seals the bottom as well so no water can get out there might be some water when you open the door but uh, i'll probably have a mat there so that that'll get all the drips so inside the shower everything's sealed up in here i've got a Extract a fan light here, so that'll extract all uh, you know your moisture out when you have a shower, and a little light. So inside we got the toilet, which you've seen before. This thing swivels, so you can when you have a shower, you'd have it like that, and you use it like that. So it's pretty easy. You just turn that thing there, that opens it to the cassette. You use the toilet, and then you can flush it. So that's just an electric flush and then you just close that up it locks that so no smells can come back close her up and i've still got to put in some mesh over here some waterproof mesh put in like your soap in these uh cavity parts of the wall so that's what it's like when it's closed it seals up on all the edges and you just you just turn the lock across and everything's sealed on the door now if you're parked on a massive angle 
the drain is here, but it'll still sort of um, pull up on one side of whatever the angle is, the lowest point. So if you run the shower, it doesn't matter if you get the toilet wet because it's all designed for that. You'll see water pulling down there. It will go out the drain, but I've got, I got to get like a squeegee or something to uh, just get those last little parts of the water out when I uh, finished having a shower. So one of the cool parts of this is it's got like a little flow tap here. So just on the back of this, adjust the flow from basically pretty much nothing to medium to high. So that's just like water saving. You could adjust it here obviously, but it's just easier up there. And you got your hot and then your cold. And I'll show you how the hot water works. If you've got it on hot, you'll turn that on. See that? That's the temperature coming out of the hot water system. And it's telling you it's automatically come on because it detects flow and it will try and raise it up to the temperature that you set it to. And we set it to 43 degrees. So it's just raising up. Sometimes it goes over and overshoots it. Just depends uh, how fast it's coming out or how slow. So there you go, it's 43 degrees. And that's pretty hot now. That's warm water coming out. So yeah, obviously, yeah, as I said, I gotta get a squeegee or something and just be able to squeegee the last little bits of water into the drain. But pretty much if you leave it, it just dries out anyway. I've sealed everything with uh, mold resistant silicon so everything's sealed and yeah you shouldn't have any mold happening in this shower and of course there's an extraction fan so it won't be uh all wet in here all the time it'll be you know just dry and when you finish with the shower you just push against it and close it up so it's locked and that door won't swing open and hit the bench Okay, so I'm going to run you through the gas system. So the gas box is in here and that's where that's stored all the time. It's got a lock there and that goes underneath into this T section here, which tees off to what's called a bayonet point. That's for the outdoor barbecue. You can just plug in a hose there and twist it and turn it and it locks, which I'll show you in a minute. That's where that tees off to. The rest tees off to the cooktop and the hot water system. So that runs all the way up there to the front of the van. So it comes up this line here, across here, then it goes, tees off there again and goes up there and that goes up to the cooktop and off there it tees over to the hot water system, which tees over there and then penetrates up through the floor over in the pantry section. And while I'm here, I'll just mention that I got a lot of comments about uh, heat from the exhaust for this uh, tank here and the plumbing pipes. But I wrapped it ages ago with this stuff called heat wrap or exhaust wrap. And you just wrap the whole thing along where the problem parts could be. So I wrapped nearly the whole length of the exhaust. And I've tested this after long drives and when the exhaust will be at its hottest and you can pretty much you can hold it with your hand pretty much and you won't burn yourself. So that contains the heat really, really well. So there's no chance of this tank or these pipes being melted because yeah, if you can hold it with your hand there, then you know, the air gap's gonna be enough to not burn the pipe, so. And whatever this is, this doesn't really get hot at all. Even when uh, the wrap's not on it, you can pretty much touch that. Another thing that I did was put in this black strapping here. It's actually designed for tank strap and that just stops maybe vibrations and just protects the tank a little bit more, keeping that rubber uh, insulation in between the metal and the tank. So that's my shower drain coming down to the Hepfo trap, inline trap comes through there and there's your, and that's your sink one, that tees into this section here and then goes into the grey water tank here. So the grey water tank is 68 litres and stores all your water drainage. And if it gets full, it'll either overflow from the top, the breather valve at the top, or you can just manually turn the valve that's off and that's on. 
So I normally just leave it open so that anything just drains onto the floor, onto the road. Um, but if I needed to, for whatever reason, store it, I'll just lock that off and it will store in the tank so it wouldn't uh, drain on the ground. Another thing I'll mention is that uh, I had a problem when I left this valve here, the tank fill valve open, the pump would just start running and circulating from the pump back through this line and then back through into the tank. It, it would just keep circulating and the pump would just keep cycling. So I had to put in a one-way valve here so that water can only go that way from your main inlet so that the pump cannot come back through there and down into the tank. So I can leave that open all the time now and I have no problem of the pump cycling when I don't want it to. So just beneath the gas cooktop here, we've got a, an off valve and that just isolates the cooktop when you want to. You can isolate it from in here and that just runs up and into the bottom of the cooktop. We've got the same thing in the bottom of the pantry for the hot water system. You can just isolate that valve there and it turns it off. Also quickly guys, the gas guy said that there has to be adequate ventilation uh, if you're going to have a gas system on board in a motorhome. So my Max Air fans um, pass as the roof ventilation system. So they're both, they, they, even if they're closed, they're still open a tiny bit. So that passes by law and also by law, he had to put in a little vent at the lowest point of the van so if gas does leak inside it can drain down and go out the uh, floor here so that's by law you need those things for the gas so when i do run out of water i just plug a hose into that inlet there and that automatically just turn the hose on and it just fills the fresh water tank under here so that is the sink the filtration system the gas cooktop hot water the shower and the toilet. Showed you underneath the van of what's going on. Now the last thing, which is one of my favorites. So out the back, we got the barbecue section. So you just open the door up like that. And these lock into place. And these fold down tables are just on a hinge, like a spring hinge. And they're supported by the stainless steel uh, ropes there, the wires. So they both come down. So this is all stainless steel, the metal and the hinges and everything. This is just pine um, table that's in the same coating that I did the bench top with, just three coats of the timber oil. And I was worried about these wire ropes rubbing against the pine over time and just wearing them out. So I actually got some brass copper pipe and I cut it to size, screwed it, drilled a 20 mil hole saw through the pine and then just screwed it in and then just grinded it down so that there's going to be no problem after time of that rubbing into the pine. So I'm still going to find a place to store this in the van but this is the little barbecue weather and when you want to have a barbecue you can just come out here put that there. Now this is a bayonet hose which plugs into that bayonet point at the bottom of the van so I'll plug that in So you just plug it in here, you take out the little uh, protector here, you just plug that in, that's in, and there you go, you got a barbecue, so you just start that up, and that's a light. So if you did have a problem for wind, there was too much wind around, and you wanted to change it, the best thing about this is you can swing these around 270 and that can now go like that the same for the other side for whatever reason you want to do that you can swing that around like that i'm obviously parked in a big hill right now so it's on a bit of a bit of an angle but um if you're on a flat surface it shouldn't be a problem and that just magnetizes to this thing here but most of the time you're just going to have it like that. So this is your preparation side and I had to chop out this little square because I still wanted access to the handle um, when it's all closed up.
So that just locks in, that little hinge there, and that's not going anywhere. I've also got a fire extinguisher here, which comes out pretty easy. Take it out, bang, ready to go, especially in the barbecue area. And you just put it in back like that. And I've also tested this barbecue at like when it's at full heat, if it's gonna damage or any of these panelings, but I've, you can literally like, when it's at full heat, you can barely feel the heat back here. So there's no problems of uh, heat damaging the back of this. So just as an, as an example, you just chuck your, your stuff here and you just chop away on chopping board and cook here. So there the barbecue area is. That's what it's gonna look like. And at the night time, I've got a light there and a light there and they give off a lot of light. They're nine watt LEDs. So there's no problems at night to see what you're doing and they're two little work areas. So it's pretty good. And I'm also gonna, in the future, put some mozzie nets on that section there and the front section so that when the van's fully open, that no mozzies or bugs can get in when you're cooking out here and you've got everything open. That's it guys, thanks for watching episode 12 and episode 13 will be coming soon which will be electrical part 2. I can't wait, wait to run through that because uh, electrical is obviously my favourite. So there's a lot of stuff to run through in that, a lot of information. But um, I hope this uh, cleared up a lot of stuff about the plumbing, the gas and the shower and other things like that. But if you still have a question just email me. Uh, hit me up on Facebook or Instagram. There's my socials just down there and Yeah, just drop me a line on YouTube or something like that but Just remember guys head to my website and there'll be a blog post for this episode and It'll have all the information broken down like Parts prices and things like that as best that I can So if you're into that and you want that information in more depth just head to my website and you'll get that there. So thank you guys for all your support and following this van build series. I really hope that you enjoy it and get value. If you do, just share it or like it or give me a follow. So I'll see you in the next episode soon and can't wait. Catch you guys.